Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. His words say this is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in this day that the Lord has tailor made and fashioned for each and every one of us. We just want to thank the Lord that we are here. We are presently recording, but we pray to the Lord that soon and very soon, with some restrictions, we can meet in person again. We are praying to that end. We know God's going to make it happen for us. If you ask anything in my name, he said, I would do it. So, you know, I, I trust what God said. Though God doesn't lie. God can't lie. God is truth. Let us pray. Father, this day, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come this morning saying thank you. We thank you when you spoke and you created the heavens and earth. We thank you when you spoke and the sun was set in a balance. We thank you when you spoke and we got the lesser light of the moon and the stars. We glad when you spoke and you said let us create man in our own image in our own likeness. I'm so glad that you kneel down in that stuff called dirt that we grow plants in, but you use not the solid dirt, but you took the dust from the dirt and you made us. And I said, thank you. We pray right now that you will speak as Samuel told Eli, as Eli told Samuel, to speak, Lord, for your servant here. Lord, today we pray that you will speak today. Hide this preacher. Hide these preachers on the keyboard and behind this podium. A man behind the cross. They were only hear the preacher preaching and the angels from heaven playing the instruments and singing. Bless right now. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank you, Lord. Let us go to scripture as we go to Philippians chapter 3 and reading your hearing verses 7 through 11 from the King James Version. And it reads, But what things were gained to me those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things were lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb that I may win Christ, and be found in him not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. This is the word of God to the people of God and wherever you are. Let us all say together, Amen. Let it be done. Amen. And today, we thank Reverend Littles for his ministry on the keyboards. And we thank all the deacons of this church. We thank the trustees we thank all the families 
and the members. But today, go with me with Paul as he had a church in Philippi. Uh, Paul appears to be writing, had written a farewell letter to the church at Philippi. Paul is informing the church of his walk with Jesus following his walk on the Damascus Road. We had a man in encounter with Jesus Christ. Paul had been going around persecuting God's people in God's church. He was even intimidating the preachers. But I heard the word say, touch not my, not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Paul came from a life of privilege. Paul was born a Jew. Paul was circumcised after he was eight days old, according to Jewish law. Paul was educated, a man in the best private schools, a man in Rome. Paul studied under a great religious teacher named Gamaliel, who also taught Luke, who was a writer of the book of Luke. Paul was reared and raised to live a righteous life according to a man, the Jewish law. Paul was brought up with the moral righteousness, but he was lacking in the righteousness according to the word of God. With all of his religious training in the school of Gamaliel, he didn't know anything about the Father. He didn't know anything about the Son. He didn't know anything about God's Holy Spirit. As he would later on say, he had a zeal for knowledge. He had a zeal, a man for God, but not according to knowledge. But after Paul had been stopped, a man on the Damascus Road, and Jesus told him to, to Ananias to carry him on down into Damascus and to teach Paul, a man, a more perfect way about how God operates. But when Paul was there in Damascus, Paul got saved and Paul enjoyed his new look, his new walk, and his new talk. But from there, when Paul, when Ananias had got finished teaching Paul, Paul made a commitment to give up the life that he thought a man was a privileged life. And Paul spoke these words in Philippians 3, 7. And he said, but whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Paul was saying what I thought was good to a man was not good, but I, I, I'm willing to give it up. A man that I could know about Jesus. I'm willing to give it up that I could walk a man and talk a, a man like Jesus. But today, for just a short time, we're going to speak from this thought, the cost of righteousness. The cost of righteousness. Losing everything to gain Jesus. If it, how about you? Are you willing to give up everything you have that you might have Jesus? Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father except by me. Jesus also said, without me, you can do nothing. The Apostle Paul, proud of leading Jesus on the master road, was going to God's house which will persecute Christians. Paul's goal was to bring confusion the world into God's house and worship. Too many people in the world now in 2021 show up on Sunday for everything and everybody but Jesus. Many come to show off the latest fashion trends. Amen. Many come dressed like they're going to the Apollo Theater. Instead of mentioning Jesus, we hear people having conversations 
about who did your hair. Uh, I like the way that your curls look. Uh, uh, you know, I, uh, you must be on Jenny Craig right now. You look like you're not lost. So with all these conversations going on, but all we're supposed to be talking about God. But this is not here. I'm glad this doesn't have a China grow. Many are coming for a name and they claim it without Jesus. Many come for a blessing without blessing God and giving him the praises to his name. Because the Bible says that everything that have breath, praise the Lord. Many are leaving a man, a mainstream church that's teaching about the word of God and going to elaborate worship centers where they don't have no Sunday school, where they don't have no Bible study, where pastor paid not to preach the word, but there to entertain. You and I can breathe the sigh of relief and say, thank you, Jesus, that God has a worship a man that are real or not uh, are like the one Jesus built in these words when he told Peter, he said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. See, Big Mama had went to that kind of church. Big Mama would sit in church and she would have a man, a little small limb off the peach tree. A man, if you're got out of line, Big Mama would reach over with that little limb and strike you one or two times right there in front of everybody. Amen. But see, we need to go back to that kind of church. But see, Paul, amen, spoke these words when he had found Jesus, amen, down uh, in Damascus, down in Nile, teaching him. He spoke these words in Philippians 3, amen, verse 8, he said, I count all things but law for the ecstasy of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dumb and manure that I may win Christ. So Paul was counted the life he had, the period life. He looked at it as being nothing when we tried to when he line it up, amen, with Jesus. But I like the old gospel song that said, I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. We are talking about the cost of righteousness. My brothers and sisters, are you ready right now to pay the cost of righteousness? We're going to talk about righteousness through faith in Jesus Christ. So we've got to have faith in God that we can walk in the righteousness of God. Like the Apostle Paul had to make Jesus on Damascus Road, you and every saved and unsaved sinner should seek an eternal righteousness that only faith in Jesus Christ can give. Amen. Jesus spoke these words to disciples and followed. When he, in Matthew 6, 33, he said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Whatever we want from God, we got to seek first the kingdom of God, where God sits high and looks low in everything that we want that is right in God. Jesus Christ told the God will add it unto us. We can't earn righteousness by a man works and deeds. God the righteous comes a man only through faith in Jesus and God worship. But I like what Paul said in Romans 10, 17. He said, faith comes by hearing and hearing a man through the word of God. I want to tell you about that. Here's a well-known televangelist, a man that's on uh, XM radio. He is followed by thousands and countless thousands of people who many times preaches. But I heard him one day preach for at least 40 minutes. But the amazing thing is in his preaching, he never said Jesus' name, not one time. But many people are paying uh, a man thousands of dollars to hear a man this kind of preaching. The Apostle Paul said this about this kind of preaching. In Romans 10, 3, he said, they didn't know how God makes people right with themselves. They tried to get right with God their own way. They didn't do it in God's way. Because Jesus Christ said, I am the way. The only way to God, my brothers and sisters, is by going uh, through Jesus. The cost of Christ is coming at a price that goes well beyond anything the world has to offer. And Jesus Christ spoke these words. He said, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. We got to have the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is something things are hoped for and the evidence of things. Amen. 
not seen. Amen. We need to be looking for that new life of righteousness in Christ Jesus. In closing, the apostle power of master that have encountered the cause of God and righteousness. We must understand the significance of the power of Jesus' resurrection. We must share in his sufferings. A man in the courtroom where we'll be all night long. We must share in his suffering at Cary where he was pierced in the side, where he was crying out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then he also said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He even screamed in his agony, in his pain. He said, it is our finish. He had just enough breath. And we too in America right now, the United States of, of America, many of us are suffering the same fate. And we look at Brother George Floyd, and we look at Brother Tamir Wright, and we look at Sister Brianna Taylor, amen, who woke up full of bullets and died. And later, Mr. Dante Wright, one year removed from being a teenager. Amen. However, God himself speaking through Isaiah the prophet gives us these words of encouragement during these Tragic and trying time. Isaiah 53, 5 tells us, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Just know that God, which is God the righteous, allowed his son Jesus to die to heal the wrongs that are perpetrated upon his sheep and his lamb. He prophesied the cause of our God and righteous in these words of the prophet Isaiah. They who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That can be you. Just give your life to Christ Jesus right now. Because the cost has already been paid for. Your account has a zero balance. All you got to do is just accept Jesus as your Lord, Savior, and Master. You say, well, Pastor, I don't know how to do this. But the Apostle Paul has already written your acceptance letter for his invitation to Christian discipleship. He said, brother, sister, unsaved sinner, just confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe deep down in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and you will be saved. In the word of Moses, all you got to do is just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Just stand still and be still and know that God is God and watch him do his work on you. Just watch him carry you down to the potter's house and put you on that wheel and spin you around that wheel of salvation, breaking down your old self, making you into a new vessel, a new you, a perfect vessel. Let us pray. Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you for you speaking today. Oh, just bless us right now. Let's go back out into the world. Give us travel and grace. And bless us that we will bless others. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank you, Lord.